y equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. So let's try again. First time was a disaster. All right. So we have y equals 2 square bracket round bracket x squared minus 3 over 2 x, my goodness, minus 3 over 2 divided by 2 is negative 3 over 4 divided by, or squared, is 9 over 16, which is a totally different number. What I have on. I blame you, Chloe. I didn't notice until Totally my fault, but, you know, you. All right. Plus 9 over 16, minus 9 over 16, plus 1. Shh. So we're going to get y equals 2, x, look one back, negative 3 quarters squared. When I multiply these, I'm going to get 18 over 16, which is 9 over 8 reduced. I meant to multiply those, not this. Let's check that. Negative 9 over 8 plus 1. So I get 2x minus 3 quarters squared minus 1 eighth, which is a completely different answer than last time. So I would catch my problem because I would put this in my calculator. So everyone's doing that. Type your original into y1. Into y2, you're typing this. Remember when you have fractions, how is the only way your calculator knows it's a fraction? If you use the alpha y equals enter button or brackets. You're completely correct. So I would have to have brackets around these bad boys. Everyone is typing it in. Y1, Y2. Y1, Y2. Yeah. Stop the madness. Stop the madness. Use fractions. You are awesome. Decimals makes you look not as awesome. In my mind. Maybe in everyone else. In word problems, decimals are lovely. Helpful. In these, you should learn how to use fractions because next year there's going to be way more. And remember I told you they're not going to be numbers. They're going to be like cosines and sines and cotans and secants. Okay. Not two can. Oh, wait. So we completed the square. Our vertex is what? Not asking Petrovich because he's got decimals. What we got? Actually, you don't need You can look up here. You can help me. What's the vertex? Of mine. Yes, you do. What's the vertex? Opposite of this. Yep. Same as this. C. You knew. Well, now you do. Bless with knowledge. So much knowledge floating in there. Okay. Axis of symmetry, Nick. Let me, uh, it would be... Uh, Yep, much better. D, domain and range. Domain and range. Gabby, what's the domain? Yeah, X, such that X, and now I'm in the real numbers. And my range, I'm going to ask Xander. What's my range? It's, yeah, it's concave up, so what's going to be? Where are these going? So it's going to be? Yeah. Greater than or equal to what's my y of my vertex? Yeah. You got it. So, I've given this almost every day since we started. Shocking. Probably going to have questions like this on your test. I don't know. Maybe. Options. No. <laughs> Not going to judge you. You saw how I did the first one the first time. There's no judging here. There is no judging here. There's also no crying in baseball. You're just statementing? Yeah. yeah. I feel that. Okay, two. Y equals negative two X plus three squared minus six. All right. I want it in standard form. What's my first step? Rihanna. 
and expand it. Write those two brackets out twice. I don't know why I'm like doing sheer actions, but yes. We're going to get y equals negative 2, x plus 3, x plus 3, minus 6. I'm judging. Totally judging right now. I can't see how you care. It would be see if I care. Get the same right, Tegan. See, I don't care what you think. Okay. So we're going to get y equals negative 2, x squared, plus 3x plus 3x is plus 6x. Hey, I'm up here doing my work. You're not paying attention. Plus 9, I was not just talking to Nick, just FYI. There was a triquetra in the back of problems. Distribute the negative 2 in, and we get y equals negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 18 minus 6 and we get negative 2x squared minus 12x minus 24 and what's my y-intercept? 0 and negative 24. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now I'm going to ask you this. Ah! Determine The discriminant will go given, I don't know why I didn't go this way, given negative 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. I want the discriminant. What else do you think I'm going to ask you for? Nature, Nature of roots. Too real and distinct, too real and equal, or non-real or imaginary, right? That's number three. Number four, I want you to solve algebraically. I ask you to solve. What am I ultimately looking for in the end? Your x intersects. I'm looking for x equals something. There are two ways you can solve. <coughs> there are two ways you can solve algebraically in this unit. What are the two ways you can solve algebraically? Factor or quad quadratic formula. Quadratic formula. Factoring sometimes works, quadratic formula always works. Okay? I'm going to make you to solve algebraically and then in exact values, which means not decimals. A is going to be y equals uh, x squared minus 3x minus 4. And b is going to be 3x squared um, plus 6x equals 4. When it says discriminant, what should that scream to you? Under the Under this square root symbol of the quadratic formula. Yes. So b squared minus 4ac is what it screams. b squared minus 4ac. The discriminant is an answer like 7, 2, 1, 5. It's just a number, correct? So we have to be in equal to 0 form first, which we already are. So this is my a, this is my b, this is my c. I'm going to get 3 squared minus 4 times negative 2 times negative 2, which is 9 minus 16, which is? Negative 7. So if I ask for the discriminant, negative 7. Done. That's it. The discriminant's just a number. People start like explaining things about the graph. I don't really care about that. Discriminant is just the number. It is negative 7. Now, I like it when you understand better than memorize. Memorize means if you just don't remember completely, things fall out. It's bad. If you understand, it makes it better. The discriminant is the number that's underneath the root. We agree? Of the quadratic formula. Everyone agrees with that. So if the number under the root is negative, what happens? There's no real roots because can I take the square root of a negative 7? No, I can't take the square root of a negative number. So if I understand, it makes it better. So if I can't take the square root of a negative number, this graph is either completely above or completely below the x-axis. Correct? 
Is this graph completely above or completely below? It has to be below because the leading coefficient is negative, so I know this graph is concave down. So it can't be completely above. If it was completely above, the arrows are going to cut down, right? So this graph is completely below. I just saw Luke. Look, look, he's on my... No, they're back. Look, look. No. The family is moving back. Where? It just flew away. I feel like you're seeing things this left. No, it flew away. Like I've never seen a woodpecker until it was here. Whoa, Rachel, that's terrible. Okay. Oh boy. I see that. Okay, so what are the nature of the roots? We could say two non real, or we could say imaginary. <coughs> All right, number four, it says solve algebraically. You have to, when you hear solve, or you see solve, because you're not going to hear it, you're going to read it yourself, I guess you can hear it from yourself. But when you see solve, you should immediately think, I have two ways. Factoring, quadratic formula. Factoring, quadratic formula. That's it, right? I see solve, I say, I need to use factoring or quadratic formula. So, I have to set y equal to zero because I'm finding the x-intercepts. That's what solve means. So I can factor this one. But multiplies can be negative 4 and adds can be negative 3. x minus 4, x plus 1. What if I actually use the quadratic formula here? Because I didn't specify. You'll get the same answers, won't you? Yeah. It would just be fine. If I say solve by factoring and you use the quadratic formula, we've got problems. That's the only time you have problems. Other than that, you could use the quadratic formula. So here I have x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0 x equals 4, and x equals negative 1, which means I have 4, 0, and negative 1, 0. And I could check this in my calculator. I should walk away knowing I did well or not, right? Because these will be your x-intercepts. So type it into your calculator. Type the original y equals to your calculator. So we're going to have x squared minus 3x minus 4. And on our y-axis, we should have 4 and negative 1. Okay, I don't know why you're staring me down with that thought. <laughs> you were looking for my soul. I was like, this is bad check this morning. He's like, so people that are. Get it equal to zero before I can do anything. So I'm going to go 3x squared plus 6x minus 4 equals zero. Um, I have nothing that can get me that. So this is going to be my A, my B. My C, I have to use quadratic formula, I don't have an option. Negative B, so negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 4. All over 2 times 3. So X equals negative 6 plus or minus 84. Root 84 yeah. over 6. Okay. Then I go and do some grade 10 math again. Grade 10 math never leaves. It completely stays. It's not going to get lost. So root 84, I can break down into what? What perfect square and another number? 4 and 21. The 4 comes out and it's a 2. So root 84 is 2 root 21. Remember, you can check these because why? Because I'm saying root 84 equals root 4 times 21 equals 2 root 21, correct? So if I went root 84 and I went 2 root 21 into my calculator, they would give me the same decimal because they are the same thing. One is just simplified, one is not. So then I have x equals negative 6 plus or minus 2 root 21 over 6. And then I do the triangle, right? It's a 3 for 1. If it can come out of all 3, it can come out. If it can't, it can't. Is there a number that can come out of all three? Yeah, it's a two. So two out of here, I get negative three. Two out of here, I get a one. Do I have to write the one? No, you're right, guys. Good answer. Thank you. Negative three plus or minus root 21 over three is the answer I want because I asked for exact values, not a decimal. Okay, 
We have two little things left to learn, and then we've learned everything for the two units. The next one I'm going to go star, 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 because if people get 70% of the class gets this right, I buy donuts for the whole class. I haven't had to buy donuts in years, just so you know. Apparently you owe last semester donuts, they never got them. They did not get above what they needed to get above. You told them they got donuts. That's what my sister told me. Yes, if they got above the 70s. Well, she told me that you owe them donuts still for something. I don't know if it was for It was for this question. If they got above a 70, then I talked to the teacher and he was like, No. Maybe you lied to them. No. I hate you. <laughs> we could get you something other than a donut. Uh, no, I don't want other people to have donuts. <laughs> oh, really? I'm going I'm to root for your drink this <laughs> So glad we're recording stuff. Okay, so star, 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 star. Stop talking, Nick. Stop talking. Okay, we're starring this. We need greater than 70% correct. I won't include Tegan in on the total because he's going to be a saboteur. All right. Okay. So we need it greater than 70%. <coughs> I don't even think they got a 50 last semester. Oh, they got that hard? No, what? it isn't hard at all. Oh, no. But people don't study it. Even though I literally say this Wait, is what it means. We're doing it right now. It will be on the test. 70% is not 70% average on the test. 70% on this question. Oh, oh, on the test, though, not right now. No, yes, on, on the test. All right, so okay. this is how the question gets set up. I will give you a quadratic. The quadratic will be missing an A, a B, or a C. Okay, it will give you the rest. It will just be missing an A, a B, or a C. This is not hard. Ready? Yeah. So we're going to go, I'm going to say, given... The equation. Ready? 2x squared minus 3x plus k equals 0. So I told you, an a, a b, or a c will be not there, and they'll be with the variable. I will pick k as the variable. It will not change. Now, any other time you can pick something else, I'm going to have k. When you see k, you're like, why is there a k? You're like, hmm, 70% question. You need to get better. OK? So in order to be missing an a, a b, or a c value, which we're missing the c this time, you see that? I'm going to have to give you the nature of the roots. So I'm going to have to say either there are two real and distinct roots, to uh, real and equal roots, or to non-real or imaginary, right? That's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to do this. This question is very obvious. Like, how is the question set up? Exactly like this every time. So given this equation, comma, determine the value of k if there are Two real and distinct, <laughs> bless you, roots. Okay. Literally, this is all there is to the question. It's not like hardcore by any means. People will literally write the test and say, yeah, you're right. I didn't get that question. No, don't. <laughs> I'm like, you knew it was there. How? How? I don't know. So. We're going to make me buy some donuts, please, and thank you. Okay, so we have two real and distinct roots. Or I'm going to have two real and equal, or I'm going to have two non-real imaginary. Every single time, I'm going to have one of the three. When you see two real and distinct roots, what does that tell you? Yes. The discriminant is going to be greater than one, or greater than zero, technically. So we know that what's underneath that square root is going to have to be greater than 1. We agree? Greater than 0, I mean, not 1. So if it's two real and distinct roots, that's indirectly telling me that what's underneath the square root needs to be greater than 0. 
What's underneath the square root? My discriminant. What is my discriminant? b squared minus 4ac is what? Greater than 0. So your first step, and I call this the donut question every single year. Your first step of the donut question is to figure out what I'm going to make the discriminant. Greater than 0, equal to 0, or less than 0. If you can get this step done, you will have the answer. If you forget that this is the step you have to do, you will never get the answer. This is where you get this, boom, you're going to get the answer correct. If you don't get this, you're going to get nothing. Okay? Call the donut question. So our first step is to figure out the discriminant. Now we can just fill in stuff. We agree? Let's fill in the stuff we have. We have A is 2, we have B is negative 3, and we have C is K. Let's fill it in. Negative 3 squared minus 4 times 2 times K is greater than 0. Then we get 9 minus 8K is greater than 0. Nothing crazy here, right? How do we get k by itself? We'll subtract the 9 over. Negative 8k is greater than negative 9. Then what do I do? You're going to divide by the negative 8. And when you're in, it's an inequality and you divide by negative, what happens? An inequality when you divide by negative, it's the only thing. Your inequality sign flips. If you divide by a negative, your inequality sign flips. Other than that, an inequality sign does nothing different. So normally your inequality sign just sits there and you do all the same solving as if it was an equality sign, if it was an equal sign, correct? The only difference with an inequality is if you divide by a negative, the inequality sign flips. So I'm dividing by negative 8. If this was a positive 8, I would do nothing. It would just stay the same. If I was adding a negative, stay the same. If I subtract a negative, stay the same. If I multiply by a negative, stay the same. The only time it flips is if I divide by a negative. So I'm going to get k is actually less than 9 eighths. Done. So the chance of me making you divide by a negative, so you have to do the step, probably pretty high. <coughs> That's it. Rarely get above a 50 on this question. It's the saddest thing ever. And then everyone's all like, yeah, we're going to do this. And then I get, and then there's like, sorry, I didn't get the question. Okay. So I'm going to give you one you're going to try. Determine the value of K. So I can word it differently. If kx squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0, what am I going to have to give you? The nature of the roots every single time, right? I need to state what they are. So determine the value of k. If kx squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 0 has 2 non- Real roots. Try it out. So, the best thing is if you can see this question and spot it and say, it's the donut question. Because then you know, if it's the donut question, I have to set up my discriminant based on my nature of roots, right? That's the step. If I can get that step, I can answer the question. How do I know it's a donut question? I'm asking you for a value of k, either a, b, or c is missing, and I give you the nature of the roots. Okay? So here it says I have two non-real roots. So I know b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. I know this is the donut question. So I have a, I have b, I have c. And I get b squared, which is 3 squared minus 4 times k times 1 is less than 0. 9 minus 4k is less than 0. Subtract 9. Negative 4k is less than negative 9. 
I divide by a negative. When I divide by a negative, when there's an inequality, it will flip 9 fourths. So I'm going to give you a couple questions to work on for the next 10 minutes, and then we're moving on to the last little topic. So your questions. Okay. Here are your two questions you're going to try. Well, I'm going to give you one question, actually. Okay. So given y equals 2x squared plus 4x plus k, determine k if there are a two real and distinct roots b oh, hello real and equal i'll be right there Thank you. What is it? Oh. And then two non real roots. So oh, here it says two real and distinct roots. So we know b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. I have a, I have b, I have c. So I have four squared. Minus 4 times 2 times k is greater than 0. I get 16 minus 8k is greater than 0. Subtract 16. Negative 8k is greater than negative 16. Divide by negative 8. And k is less than 2. So remember it flips. What happens when it's an equal sign? Does an equal sign flip or do anything? No, it's an equal sign. It flips to be still an equal sign. It's not going to change. It. So here we have two real and equal roots. B squared minus 4AC equals 0. We're still getting the same thing. 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times K. So I get 16 minus 8K equals 0. Subtract my 16, I get negative 8K is equal to negative 16. Divide by negative. When it's an equal sign, does diffly squat. So I get K equals 2. And then this one, 2 non-real, b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times k is less than 0. 16 minus 8k is less than 0. Negative 8k is less than negative 16. And then k is less than those. Oh, not less than. Not less than. No. Racer. What's it going to be? Greater. And why did I miss it? Because I did what I always tell people not to do. I skip this step. Divide by negative 8. Divide by negative 8. Because the moment I do that, I always flip it. If I skip that step, I sometimes forget. Yeah. Would there be a question on the test for them to, like, all three? all three of them with the same equation? You could. But most often it's one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Last thing I want to go over, and then it's review and moving on, and your test is still Wednesday, right? So we move on on the um, Monday and tomorrow. 
On a Tuesday, we'll go back to review, but we'll still start off with the quiz questions, right? Okay, so what I wanted to show you is sometimes you can be given an equation. Everyone paying attention? Because you have to listen. I'm not going to write the whole thing now, we're just going to listen. So here it says, Evan passes a flying disc to a teammate. Now there's often it's a disc or it's a golf ball or it's some sort of ball because balls make a parabolic shape, right? Like you throw, they go up, they come back down. Footballs you throw up, they come back down. It might be a shallow parabola, but it's still a parabola and what? Rockets. All right, they get the, the rockets go up and they come back down. So it's always like some sort of object that goes up and comes back down. Okay? So often the equation itself has a negative leading coefficient. Why would that be? It has to go down, it has to be concave down, right? Now sometimes it could go up, but then it would never, like, it just, <laughs> I don't know, pew, forever. Okay, so, Evan passed the flying disc to a teammate during a competition at the Flatland Ultimate and Cups Tournament in Whoa. Winnipeg. Whoa. Yeah. The flying disc follows this path. So this is something you want to write down. So we're going to, this is the path. It's H of D equals negative 0 decimal 0 2 d squared plus 0 0.4 d plus 1. Okay? The next thing you're going to look at, so it's a flying disc. Great, that's all it said before. I don't really care. I show a flying disc, it does this. Right? What we need to look for is what is h of d and what is d? Because they gave us variables, so they need to tell us what they stand for. Okay? So here it says where h is the height in meters. So that's what I care about. So I know this is a disc. From all that information before, that's all I care about. And then it says h is the height in meters. Okay, that's helpful. Then I have to look for what d is. And then it says d is the horizontal distance in meters. d is the horizontal distance Okay, that the flying disc has traveled through the thrower. If no one catches the flying disc, I don't really care what that is. Um, it's going to hit the ground is what it's basically saying. <laughs> this, the, it stops when it hits the ground. It doesn't like, it's not going at such a pace that it flies through the dirt into the ground and embeds itself a meter down. Like that's not what's happening. It, it hits the ground and stops. Okay. All right. So I have a flying disc. H is the height that it goes up. And D is the horizontal distance it travels before it hits the ground. We agree? So I can ask you this. I can ask you, what is the maximum height that this disc goes to? Okay? Maximum height. Of the disc. Now, if I give you the word maximum, I gave it in word problems. If I give you the word maximum, what am I asking you to do? Get this into vertex form by completing the square. This is kind of an ugly one. Try it out. But it has decimals, so it should make you very happy, James. You're looking for the Y, but why are you looking for the Y? Because it says maximum height. If I said, um, what's the horizontal distance it takes to reach the maximum height, then you give me the x of the maximum, right? So that's why the variable matters. Okay, so we're going to complete the square on this one. We're going to get h of d equals negative 0 decimal 0 to square bracket round bracket d squared. When I go 0 decimal 4 divided by 0 dec negative 0 decimal 0 2, what do we get? That's 0.4. Divided by, is it 20? 0.4 divided by a negative 0 0.02. You get negative 20 D. Yes, it's going to be very interesting. It was actually really good. Can you say the brown? It was one of the best things that's happened this year. I'm really wow. tasty. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're not even getting a hundred for failing on this. Only so we have negative 20 divided by 2 squared. 
Blue is like they just took it out of the package and handed it yeah, to you. they sear it for like a minute on just on That's the probably excessive. I bet you they just take it out of the package and toss it out. Yeah, it's still cold. It actually is. So you get 100. I actually want to try it out. Not I. A minus 100. Plus 1. So we're going to get negative 0 decimal 0 to bracket D minus 10 squared. What's negative 0.2? times negative 100. It's a plus 2 plus 1. So I'm going to get negative 0 decimal 0 to d minus 10 squared plus 3. And how did I know to complete the square? Because the word max was in the question. When it asks you anything with the word max, like the maximum this or the maximum that, that's what it's screaming at you. Like off the page. It's like, stop the madness. Do the square. But that's what it's doing. Okay. Which one of these answers do I want? The 10 or the 3? The 3. Because I asked for height. And height is here, which is y. Right? So the max height is what? 3 meters. Because there's a unit. So the max height is 3 meters. I could have asked you what horizontal distance does it get to off when it approaches the maximum height, what would it be? 10 meters. So it takes 10 meters horizontally to reach the maximum height of 3 meters. And, and yeah, does that make sense? So depending on which one it's asking you for. But when it says maximum in a word problem, it screams, complete the square, every single time. I wish it jumped off the page and it screamed at you, complete the square, with that voice. Then you wouldn't mess up, you know? Yeah, you can hear it? Yeah, good, good. All right. Okay.